on the replay wherever you are at. I am going to, I'm a little bit behind, I forgot to have this open. I'm going to share this into my Confident Women Leaders group. If you are a woman who is in a leadership position and would like to have a little bit of support and help in getting through some of those leadership challenges, you'll want to join my Confident Women Leaders group. And two seconds. So I've put some links up in the top notes here so you can grab those as I talk and share things. But while I'm sharing this into my group, please put a note where you're checking in from, say hello, um, give me one of those thumbs up or some other one of your other favorite emojis. Two seconds. This is always a little bit of a, I have to try and figure out where I'm going here all the time. Okay, Confident Women Leaders Group, sharing into the group, posting, 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 posted. All right. So today we're talking about getting the help you need to thrive. And so if you've been tracking along with me over the past few weeks or months, you know I've been talking a lot about thriving. And so as we go through today, I want you to kind of keep in mind some of the things that I've been talking about and perhaps where you've been challenged. Now, I share lots of guide sheets along the way, and I give you lots of support, um, give you lots of suggestions of where to go and find information, but maybe, just maybe, you're th saying, that's not enough. So today, I want to talk about three places you can get help to thrive beyond books, courses, and, you know, maybe some of these blogs or these videos that I've been doing for you. Where else can you get help? <clears throat> if you're following along with me today, my guess is you know that this is, um, sorry, I gotta just move this. I'm getting the back view of my screen and it's very, very distracting watching myself wave my hands in the background. Why isn't it not working? Sorry, 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 sorry. Almost there. You know, when you wanna do something, it doesn't work when you're trying to do it when you are live. Aha, I did it, okay. So again, it's just really distracting watching yourself wave your hands in the background. So as we've been talking, I've been giving you lots of ideas and suggestions and places to go, things to follow along with in terms of blogs and books and audible books and um, guide sheets and all that stuff, but perhaps you're saying that's not enough. So I wanna give you some additional support today because you might be one of those leaders who is struggling to get through your days, frantically running around chasing everybody else's fires and never getting to that point of thriving, never getting to that point of doing the stuff that you want to do, getting through the work that you want to done, get done, feel good about the work you do, and then going home at the end of the day going, ha, ah, that was a good day. Perhaps you're one of those people who gets home at the day, end of the day and is like, oh my God, I just feel exhausted, you know, worn out, don't have any energy to do anything. And we want to turn that around. So we've been talking about the surviving to thriving continuum. Many of us spend most of our work days and most of our evenings in survival mode, just barely getting by, struggling to kind of hang on, always worried we're going to drop the ball, but we're, we're not sure how to get all the way over to that thriving. I don't, you know, I've tried some of these ideas, I've tried to get to that place of thriving and it's just not working for me, Kathy. Like, give me something else, right? So that's what I wanna talk about today is three other places you can look. So the first place you can look is one of the ones that I think many of us often overlook. And that is your EAP program, your Employee Assistance Program. So your Employee Assistance Program is beyond benefits and I think these kind of go hand in hand. There are times when you honestly need some additional support. I can look back over times in my leadership and I ended up getting counseling because my marriage was struggling. We got counseling for our kids because our kids were having some difficulty where they were at and that was impacting my life and my work life. I've connected with a naturopath and that's been paid through through benefits when I've had digestive stuff. Sometimes I've had to reach out and you know get medication from the doctor because I was struggling with depression. Um, the, the benefits program and the EA program, I think sometimes we overlook and there are many things that we're struggling with in our own lives or our partner or our children or our adult parents or our aging parents are struggling with and we seem to forget that we have a resource right at our fingertips that isn't even going to cost us money in many cases. 
And, you know, back it up for a minute, I think in, when we look at the levels of support that our benefits and our EAP program can cover, I can't tell you how many people have um, massages covered and don't use them, right? Massages are a wonderful way to start to de-stress, to, to give yourself some of that, that much needed self-care. So, you know, getting massages, going for Reiki or, or um, some other form of energy treatment is an important part. And we need to get that. If we're going to come back to taking care of our body, mind, and soul, it starts with getting some of that work. So looking at your EAP program or your, your benefits program to provide that. Then that next level, like I say, if you have an EAP program and maybe you don't have one in your workplace, maybe you work for an organization that, that doesn't have that level of support for you, perhaps your partner does. And so check that out. But if you go onto your EAP website, there is a wealth of information that you've probably never even checked out. There are uh, articles and links and videos and webinars and um, referral services and you can phone for a phone consult and talk to somebody just for you know 10 or 20 minutes i've seen some of the eap sites you can phone for um, lawyer information you can get help with your aging parents you can get help with your retirement planning like there are tons of stuff out there that your employee assistance program does for you and you probably haven't even been checking into it so that's the first place that I want you to think about. When you are struggling, when you are barely surviving your days, when you are having, um, hey, I just noticed comments here, sorry. Yay, hey Trish, yes. Um, yeah, a whole book on stress reduction. There you go, a whole workbook. Exactly, that's what's out there and people aren't accessing that information. I remember I had a whole, um, probably about five or six CDs that I got from my EAP pro program that talked about parenting stuff, uh, had videos and um, or audios, uh, meditation kind of things, you know, those relaxation techniques. So your EAP program should be used more than it probably is. And again, it's not just for you, it's for your whole family. So if there's somebody else in your family struggling, then that's draining you. And so reach out and get some of that help to give you extra information because it's really, really important. So that's the first place to look. Um, EAP. So I'm looking at my notes. I want to make sure. Oh, financial support. So if you're struggling with things like um, budgeting or, you know, trying to <clears throat> um, save money, those kinds of things, EAP program. Uh, addictions. So if you or your, any of your family members are struggling with addictions and don't just simply think alcohol or drugs, there's way more that we, we're struggling with within in terms of addictions um gambling there's um there's uh food addictions there's lots of stuff that we're struggling with so that's another one and then some of the eap programs you can phone a nurse and talk to a nurse so wealth of information there that i think is often overlooked second place that you can reach out to is your um is your ability to reach out either within your organization um, or around in, in, in the world around you, in your field, or in your own personal life, is to find yourself a mentor. So what is a mentor? Well, a mentor is somebody that you lean on, lean into, get information from to help you advance in your career. A mentor is often somebody who's older than you or more experienced than you that you can learn from. So if you think about the people who have been around your field for a while, the people who have had, uh, you know, their finger in it for a long time, those are the people you want to reach out to. In a mentorship, often what you'll find is it's a longer term relationship, but not always. Sometimes it's just a quick question that you ask somebody and get some information. But a mentor is there to give you some of their wisdom, to impart on you some of the stuff that they've learned over the years, to share some advice, some helpful suggestions. Oftentimes a mentor will open the door where you couldn't do it on your own. So perhaps they'll introduce you to someone, maybe you've been looking to find a new position or start something new and you're kind of not sure how to get into that. A mentor will often say, here, you know, I have a membership in this organization, or I know that person, or come with me to this networking event. And they will kind of put their arm around you, and they will take you and guide you through that. So when you think of a mentor, again, think of who is it out there 
that has a lot of information. Who would I love to sit down with and pick their brain? And in a mentorship role, what often happens is you seek them out. And there are formal mentorship programs, but more often than not, mentorship is an informal relationship where you just call somebody up and you say, hey, would you mind just having lunch with me? I just have some things that I would love to get your input on. And you have lunch with them or you have coffee maybe once a month or you just phone them, but you lean into them. So when I was in my organization years ago, it was an informal relationship that I had with somebody who actually was not in my organization. They were outside of my organization, but I had regular calls with them to help me through the, the contracts that I was developing. And every time I would get on the phone with him, he would give me all of this little bits of tidbits of information that was kind of like insider information that I would never have known on my own. And he, it was like he wanted to see me succeed. He wanted to give me that additional help to sort of spur me along. So that was one mentorship role that I had. I had other mentorship roles where it was in-house and I had people who had been around longer. My boss certainly mentored me. Oftentimes, though, it's not your boss who's your mentor, which is, is interesting to know, but it might be. So my boss would have given me information about what it was like to deal with this person in this situation, how I might navigate this challenge I was having with staff. Uh, they might, he might have told me things like, um, this is where you're going to get the information you need. You know, do some research here, read this book, try this. You know, I've been through that, you know, go there. So that might be another place to look. Um, in your mentoring relationships, uh, sorry, I'm making sure I got my notes down. Um, the, the thing is about mentor relationships, again, sometimes they're formal relationships more often than not, but you often are the one that has to seek out the relationship. It's not going to sort of land on your lap. Most often they're not, they're not going to knock on your door and say, Hey, would you like a mentor? Um, would you like me to be your mentor? It doesn't usually happen that way you're the one who has to seek out that other person. So you might just kind of make a list of, you know, um, the information you're trying to learn, the, the skills you're trying to develop, the uh, knowledge you're trying to gain, and then go, who would have that information? You know, where could I gain that information? Who might share some of that, that those ideas with me? And so you might do it that way, or you might go, who are the leaders that I respect? Who are the people around me that I really look up to? Uh, what, how could they help me? What could I ask of them? You know, and what might they be willing to offer? And then engage in that conversation. You can ask in your organization if there are formal mentorship programs. There might be. You might not even be aware of them. So many organizations match an older more experienced worker with a younger, less experienced worker, and they will match those relationships for you. So that might be one thing you can do is ask in your organization. My HR director was a mentor to me many, many times. She would walk me through, here's how to write a performance. And beyond the, this is what's in the policy manual, right? She would help me tweak those words and say things that were um, delicate. And how could I present them in a way that was going to be taken better by the employee? Or here's a discipline letter and, and you know, how do you write that? Or how do you have those discussions? We would, we would um, role model some of those discussions around, okay, this is going to be a little bit dicey. How are you going to say it? Yeah, she might say that might not be the best approach. And she would help me come up with a better approach. So within your organization, look for the people uh, who are perhaps your boss, perhaps, you know, in a position. The, uh, the people that are in those, uh, I don't know what to call them, often those, those roles that aren't your traditional or your longer standing roles that have been created for them. Sometimes when people move out of leadership positions, an organization creates a role for them because they have a wealth of information. We don't want to lose them, but they're not really into leading anymore. Those are people you should lean into. Sometimes that's the policy person or the safety person. Those people have a ton of experience and you could learn a lot from them. Um, it could be somebody from your personal life. One of my clients has, uh, her dad is a wonderful mentor. Whenever she's struggling with, how do I do this? 
she'll pick up the phone and phone him. Another client I was talking to the other day said, it was my aunt that I called. I had written a letter and I wanted somebody to give me some feedback on it. And so I ran it through my aunt first. That's another place to think of uh, finding a mentor. It may not be that you have one mentor and it may not be that this one person gives you everything you need. So again, come back and look at what are the skills I need? Where am I struggling? How am I trying to advance my career and who can help me advance my career? And then the last place I wanna talk about looking for a mentor is online. If you think about uh, weight loss or if you're into meditation or, uh, you know, you're into home renovations or something, you probably watch people online or on TV all the time. That's a mentor relationship. Think about books you've read or um, courses you've been in. Who has that information that you're looking for and can you lean into them? Now, in many situations, you can't have those conversations with those people. Sometimes you can. So don't uh, overlook the fact that you can find an online mentor. So we're talking today about three places to get additional help beyond the books, beyond the blogs, beyond the courses. Where else can I get help to thrive in my leadership? So we've talked about utilizing your EAP program or your employee assistance program or your benefits package more. That's one place that's often overlooked. We just talked about mentoring. And now the third place I wanna suggest you look in terms of moving from surviving to thriving and getting some of that additional help is coaching. Coaching's often confused with mentoring, and so I want to make sure that I'm giving you a little bit of an understanding of what the difference between coaching and mentoring is. And the truth is, most of us use the lots of definitions and words interchangeably. So this is my definitions and understanding. You'll probably have a zillion other people out there who will tell you different things. And so just be aware of what you're hearing or learning um, and just knowing what you need and that's going to help you. As I go through this today, I wanna to remind you that I always have guide sheets for you. So today's guide sheet is up in the, down below, wherever it is, um, in, the, in the notes section here, I've included the links to the Confident Women Leaders Group, which I shared at the beginning. I included the links to a blog I wrote on, you know, overcoming the fear of hiring a coach. And I included the links to, oh, sorry, Mastering Confidence is in there too, but today's guide sheet. And today's guide sheet is the three additional questions you probably aren't gonna think about that you'll want to ask a potential coach. So that's in the, in the notes section there for you. So that's the guide sheet that I've done today. So I wrote a blog and in the blog I talked about, so you can go see some of this as more than what I'm telling you today and to refresh if you, if you don't catch it all today. But what I find for many women is we know we need additional help and we're uncomfortable reaching out and picking up the phone and phoning our EA pro, EAP program or making a doctor's appointment or asking somebody to mentor us. I mean, all of that's uncomfortable, right? Nobody wants to admit they're struggling. It's hard to say, I need help. It uh, feels vulnerable to put ourselves out there and say, something's not right and I can't figure it out on my own. And so sometimes people will go, I think maybe coaching might help me, but I don't really know what it is. I don't know how to get a coach or if I have the right coach or what this coach is gonna offer for me. So I kinda wanted to talk a little bit about that today. When we think about mentoring and coaching, let's start there. Um, and let's even back up further. There's probably three or four definitions we wanna kinda go through. The first one is mentoring is often where you are getting the wisdom from that person. They are imparting their wisdom on you. They're giving you advice, suggestions, information, knowledge, um, sharing skills, that kind of stuff. So that's a mentorship role. Coaching, on the other hand, is where I'm pulling that wisdom out of you. You already have a ton of information. You already know what you want to do you're probably just scared to do it, or you don't know where to take the first step. So for example, yesterday I was coaching somebody and we were talking about um, becoming more um, organized, right? She knew exactly what she needed to do. I didn't have to give her advice. I didn't have to tell her what to do. She knew she needed to create some habits that were going to help her do that better. So that's 
the questions that I'm asking as a coach are pulling that out. So for example, as a coach, I might say, so you want to be more, you know, productive. What do you already know about productivity that will help you, right? So, and then, you know, they may have already taken a course on, on time management. They might already have a system that they've purchased that they haven't started using. They know many of these things. It's the same as we all know how to lose weight, eat healthy, exercise, and, uh, you know, don't overeat, right? Those are the, the kind of things that we know will help us lose weight. That doesn't mean we do it. That doesn't mean we take action. A coach helps you to draw out that inner wisdom and take action. And we do that by asking powerful questions. I will ask a ton of questions when I'm coaching clients to gather information. I'm going to switch my page here so that I can see if I had anything else. Uh, part when When we're talking about mentoring and coaching, Mentoring is often focused on your career. So a mentor is helping you to advance to the next level, helping you to move your career along, maybe get in some doors that you hadn't been able to, give you some of that um, industry-specific information that you maybe didn't know. And so that's what a mentor is doing. A coach is helping you to develop yourself as an individual. That's going to help you be better in your career. But it's coming from that inside piece rather than completely outside giving sort of information in. So that's one of the things. Now, when you're thinking about the difference between a coach and a counselor or a coach and a therapist, because that's often the other piece that people will say, okay, so what's the difference between coaching and therapy or coaching and counseling? Therapy, and again, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a counselor, so uh, they will probably have a def different definition than I have, different way of explaining it. But often the, the therapy or the, the counseling comes from a medical model, so they're looking at what's wrong and what do we need to do to fix it. Often a coaching or therapy model will spend more time looking at what's the cause of that, uh, looking into sort of some of the challenges that 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 individuals had in the past and sort of healing from those. It's a psychological kind of model, right? Whereas coaching, we're again, indicating that there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. I don't need to fix you. And in fact, you have an incredible amount of inner wisdom. And my job as a coach is to pull that out of you. I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to probe. I'm going to dig. I'm going to get you to look into what it is you truly want and we're coaching is truly future focused we're creating a powerful vision and we're going to make that vision so vivid for you and so realistic um like alive and like you could touch it that it's going to pull you forward and so that's what coaching is doing we're we're working to bring you forward so that's kind of oh and then the one other thing is teaching so when we're thinking about teaching Teaching is giving you information, how to, um, it's the skill, the, the, the knowledge of how to do something. So me, myself as a coach, I actually blend all of them together. So you will find that if I'm coaching you, there's a blend between mentoring and coaching and teaching. I don't get into the counseling or therapy. But so again, I'll go back to the, the conversation I was having with a client yesterday. We were talking about how to become more productive. Part of what I was doing was coaching her. I was drawing out of her, her inner wisdom. What do you already know about productivity? What do you already know work, knows works for you? When you're more productive, what does it feel like? What's the point in being more productive? Why bother? Why get to being product, pr more productive, right? And of course, once we start talking about that, we know that when we're more productive, we feel better for starters. We're getting work done that we know is important to get done or providing time for us to get to that other stuff. If you're not productive, you have a tendency to stay late. Uh, you feel exhausted and drained by the end of the day and you go home late. So you're missing a healthy supper. You're missing feeling energetic with your family, all of that kind of stuff, right? So I help to reconnect to that vision. When you're productive, uh, what does that look like? Why is it important to be productive? 
then sometimes I will move into teaching where I'm giving some information. You know me well enough if you've been following any of my blogs. I'm an avid reader. I constantly am training myself. So I've done a lot of in, uh, research around willpower, around productivity, around self-discipline, around time management. So I was sharing some information like ditch the ginormous to-do list and have only three things on your to-do list that you need to do today, right? And then I was also teaching her things like you need to create in the morning a, a, your habit. Don't start your habit at three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Create a habit in the morning when you have more willpower, when you're stronger, when you're better able to make decisions and set the tone for the rest of your day. So that's a little bit of teaching or training. And then because I've been, you know, in leadership positions, I've struggled myself with productivity. I might add a little bit of mentoring in. And so I talk about, you know, when I was writing my book, how I had to focus on being really, really disciplined and staying out of my email when I was in that writing block. I had to learn how to shift what I was eating so that I was um, eating more protein because that helped me build more uh, willpower or self-discipline. So I often blend coaching, mentoring, and teaching. That's just how I work. Not all coaches are like that. And I just like to be upfront with people that when you hire me, that's what you get is a blend of all that. And when you're looking for a coach, often what you're looking for is somebody who has what you're looking for. If you're looking for a uh, the uh, coach who's going to, to coach you to lose weight, you probably want to hire somebody who's been overweight and gone through the challenges to lose weight. If you're hiring somebody who's always been skinny, they may not quite get you, right? So you may want to look at somebody who's been through it. If you're wanting to start your own business, you may want to hire a coach who started their own business or has information about what it's like to be an entrepreneur. There are coaches who work um, within organizations and who have never been entrepreneurs. So if you're looking to hire a coach to help you run your business better, you might be looking for a business coach, somebody who's really skilled at, has lots of information on how to do that. When I was writing my book, I hired a, a writing coach. I wanted somebody who knew what it was like to sit in front of the computer every day and write crappy and have your head filled with all of these things like, I am never gonna get this book published. I don't know what I'm doing. Who's gonna read this book? I wanted to know that somebody got it. So that's one of the things that you need to think about. Any questions, guys, I always forget to say this earlier on. Any questions that you have for me, pop them in to the, the question box and I will answer them for you because I always wanna make sure that I'm, I'm helping you. So again, we're talking about three additional ways beyond blogs, books, and courses to help you thrive. And we've talked about utilize your EAP program or your benefits program more often. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Glad to know that you guys are tracking along with me. Uh, then we've talked about hiring a mentor or developing a mentor relationship with either within your organization or outside your organization. And then finally, we've been talking about hiring, hiring a coach. When you hire a coach, I mean, if you've never been involved with coaching before, you honestly probably have no idea really what it is. You might have heard it, especially if you follow me, you know that I'm a coach. But beyond that, you might not know. The thing about coaching is, honestly, anybody can hang their shingle up and call themselves a coach. And so for those of us who have worked our butts off to be trained and skilled and excel at coaching, honestly get a little bit uh, hurt or annoyed by that. So it's important that you do your due diligence in finding out what the coach's credentials are. Yes, there are a wide range of credentials. You can become a coach in a weekend on an online course in an hour and you know get this little piece of paper that says, I'm a coach. You may be okay with that. But my guess is you're not wanting somebody to give you advice on how to lose weight that got their, their training program in an you know, hour-long course. You probably want somebody who's more skilled at that. When you're looking to look at coaching credentials, the ICF or the International Coach Federation is the um, international accrediting body. So if you want to know if this person's credentials mean anything, I mean, anybody can say I was trained at XYZ school. 
if their their credentials mean anything, if the course that they took their training from means anything, you'll want to go over to the International Coach Federation. And this link is in the um, blog post that I wrote, but I will try and remember to put it in after I'm done today. And you can see all of the information you need to see about coaches. You can also go to their referral site and you can search what you're looking for in a coach. And so if you're looking for somebody who's in Canada in your time zone, because most coaching is done on the phone, although not all of it, some is face to face. Maybe you're wanting somebody that's in your city where you can go sit and, and connect with them. Again, maybe you're looking for a coach to help you start a new business or you're looking for a coach that's going to help you with a relationship or grow your, your leadership. You can put those parameters in and find that coach that you're looking for. What most of us coaches will suggest that you do is you find two or three coaches and you set up a phone call with them or a, a quick conversation with them. I do a 30-minute complimentary coaching session where you get to reach out and ask me some questions and see if we're a good fit. You should be asking, what are your credentials, right? What, what credentials do you have? So I am a PCC, which is a professional certified coach through the International Coaching Federation, which means I have, uh, I can't remember now, I want to say over 700 hours of coaching, but I could be I renewed last year, so I can't remember the exact numbers, but it means that I have hours and hours worth of coaching. It means that I've been mentored and coached by a master certified coach, which is the next level for me. There are three levels of coaching. And it means that I have had, you know, hours and hours and hours of coaching that I've, that I've had to record and been edited or um, marked on and coached on so people have listened to my coaching and given me feedback on my coaching I've done tons of work and so that's what I said earlier when anybody can become a coach that's why I get a little little annoyed because I've worked hard to get to the point I am in my coaching and I think that coaching is a well-respected profession and I want to keep it that way so what I suggest you do again is find a two or three coaches ask them what are your credentials what's your coaching process so for me, I usually coach people a couple times a month on the phone. As I said, most of, or all of my coaching is on the phone, really. Uh, and I walk you through a process where you get to start with where are you at, what's going on for you, but then where do you want to be? So we set some goals right off the bat. In the first two or three sessions, we're kind of laying a foundation for where you want to go, and then we're working towards those goals. I'd be upfront and honest and say, I do a blend of mentoring and coaching. It's not pure, pure coaching that I do. I mix it in with my own experience because most of the women I am coaching are women leaders who struggle with a level of confidence, a level of work-life balance that I experienced for many years myself. I have some information for you. I want to see you succeed. And I've got some tips and tools of the trade that can help you. I will give you some advice. Pure coaching is not advice at all. So that's what you're kind of looking for is, is there a blend in that? And then you're asking them, do you have any references that I can use? You would ask for references, you know, if you were hiring a babysitter for your child, you probably would ask for references if someone was house sitting for you. You have a right to ask a coach for references. On their website, most coaches will show you a bunch of testimonials. You know, other people have said about their coaching. Read those. What are people telling you about this coach? Is it what you're looking for? So then there are three other questions that I think you should be asking. And I've included those in a link in the blog, and it's here. This is the guide sheet for today. Guide sheet 26 is the three critical questions you should be asking a potential coach. And here's why. The biggest thing about coaching is you want it to be a good fit. You want, this is a person that you're going to trust with your life for a little while. You are going to share things that you may not have shared with anybody or very, very few people. You want to know that this person has your back, is going to hold your information carefully and walk you through the process carefully. That's often more about a better fit than anything. And so I've included in this guide sheet three critical questions that I think you should be asking. So you'll want to pop over there and get that. And you can get that at silverrivercoaching.com 
slash guides. And again, it's guide sheet 26, the three critical questions you should be asking a potential coach. Again, because it's so, so, so important that you get a coach that you feel comfortable with, that you get a coach that you um, feel you can connect with. And if you aren't feeling that level of comfort, you're not going to find the coaching relationship is beneficial to you. You're going to hold back a little bit. You're going to hesitate. You're going to um, only, you know, get so far. But when you completely trust this coach, when you completely connect with this coach, you're going to find that you are like crazy in how much you excel. It's going to help you really truly move from where you are to that full potential, both in your leadership and your life. And that's the other thing about coaching I want to just quickly throw out is that coaching is whole life. Um, I, the coaching that I do. And, and many times you'll see this even in traditional business coaching or in-house coaching. It's not just about the job itself. It's about your whole life. If you're struggling to set boundaries today at work, you're probably struggling to set boundaries with your mother or your mother-in-law or your hairdresser, right? If you've always struggled with um, uh, being sort of a risk taker and jumping into new things in your personal life, you're probably struggling with that at work. It's one and the same. And so when I'm coaching you, I'm coaching you as a person, not as a leader in this position in this organization. I'm coaching you as a person. And so I'm going to draw out of you everything that I possibly can that's going to reignite your passion for life and help you to move towards that vision that you want to be. So any questions, again, pop them in, ask me, I'm here, as long as you guys are still asking me questions and have things to, to um, listen in about. But again, just to, just to recap, beyond blogs, books, and training courses, how do I move to thriving, right? What do I need to do to get to thriving? And these are the three often overlooked places that I think you want to go to your EAP program or your benefits program. Go see the doctor and get some pills if that's what you need. Or go see a, a nurse who's going to help you or a dietitian who's going to help you find a better eating plan. Uh, go for your massages on a regular basis. Reach out to a naturopath. See a counselor or a therapist. Use all of the resources that your EAP program has in terms of online books and manuals and, and webinars and all of that kind of stuff. Your EAP program and your, your benefits plan are golden. Make use of them. Second one, find yourself a mentor. Either in-house or in the world around you, find someone who is more experienced than you where you're at that you can create a relationship with to pick their brain. You're looking for an mentor relationship for them to impart wisdom on you. How did you do this? Where can I look for information? What's going to help me best in this situation? Who's going to, to um, you know, guide me through this? And they might open doors for you that you didn't have available to you before, right? And so find somebody that you can do that. Again, that might be somebody in your organization. It might be somebody in the sector or the field that you work in that's been around longer than you have. It could be somebody in your personal life. You may also find formal mentor, mentoring relationships. So don't, you know, think that that's not something you can utilize. And then the third one is to hire a coach. Find a coach that's going to give you the support and information and help that you need to be the best version of yourself. That's what coaching is all about. I want to see you reach your full potential. I want to see you live fully and enjoy what you're doing. I want to see you advance in your career, but also find the work-life balance that you want and need in your life. So coaching can do that. Three questions to ask a potential coach. What are your credentials? What's your coaching process? And do you have any references that I can follow up with? And then there are three critical questions that I think you should be asking a coach to make sure that you get the best fit for you, that you're finding the right coach for you. And you can find those extra three questions in the guide sheet, silverrivercoaching.com slash guides. It's guide sheet number 26. I've got the link 
here, wherever it is, wherever you're seeing the notes, the link is there for you to ask those three critical questions. If you want to book with me and you want to have a, a 30 minute free session, uh, again, the link isn't in there. I think it's at the bottom of the blog, if I remember correctly, but I will put that link in after. Yeah, book a call with me. And if you do, you should be asking me those three questions that are in the guide sheet. Um, and so I look forward to getting, you know, some people phoning me up and saying, I got three questions I want to ask you, Kathy, because I truly, truly, truly want to be here for you. I want to see you move from that surviving to thriving in both your leadership and life. And again, that's one of the things that's extremely critical for me. I don't want to see you just excel in your leadership. I don't want you to be this amazing leader at the detriment of the rest of your life. I don't think that's living fully. I think that's partially living. And I think if we want to live fully in our whole lives, we need to excel in leadership and have a really, really good personal life too. We need to be healthy. We need to have good relationships in our personal lives. We need to find that we're balancing, balance isn't a word, that we're balancing both that leadership in life so that's my goal when I coach women is I'm helping them to excel both in leadership and life to thrive right in both areas of their lives so that they really truly are finding that they're enjoying leadership and life. If you have any questions, we're winding down, pop your questions into the question box. Again, I'll add all the notes in there after that I forgot to add. And if you have any questions, whether you're on the live show or on the replay, I always answer questions if they pop into the chat box. If you are a woman in a leadership position wanting to, you know, lean into another group of women who are here to support you, please come and join the Confident Women Leaders Group. We would love to have more of you in the group. And the link is in the notes as well. Thank you always for watching, and I will talk to you next week, my dear. Thanks. Have an awesome rest of your day.